Hello, everybody, and welcome to There's a Will. This edition is in the last uh, few days of May, and I have with me in the studio two standbys, the uh, beautifully dressed, as usual, Nicholas Richardson, a relation, unfortunately, but thank we're still looking. Yeah, thank you. And Delighted to be here once again. on the genealogy. Check the DNA. There's a chance. There's a chance. There's a chance. Uh, with a cravat and battling his cravat is Evo Bender, Professor Evo Bender, I should say, uh, with his bow tie. May the best man win. I, I've I, gone for the I concede. I concede already. You concede yeah, already. Yeah. I've gone for can the I, conventional can I be cloth. Very ungallant and ask is, did you tie that bow tie yourself? <laughs> because that, of course, is the test. He doesn't tie the bow tie. Well, that is obviously uh, a pin on. Let's uh, uh, to be to be to be painfully I, to be painfully honest. <laughs> Uh, 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 I have mastered the art of tying a bow tie, but this one is actually a, a fake one. A yes. fake one, yes. yes. You see, I'm on, you I, can tell. I'm on a television you can program tell. where people <laughs> wait, wear fake clothing. This is so disappointing. I know, it's terrible. I must speak to my agent. <laughs> your, your agent? What's agent? 007? 007. Yeah. Listen, we have a, we have a special guest. On next time. We have a special guest in the, in the continuing the battling professor motif. We have a man who has, is happy just to be himself, he doesn't need any pretentious neckwear, and that's <laughs> Professor Olgerd <laughs> O.M. Buowski. <laughs> Did I say your name correctly, sir? No, no, not entirely. Can, can you, a related family with Jembovskis, but I'm with can, can, you please, so, can you please help me out, please? It's, it's just Ujembo. <laughs> Ujembo, okay. In Polish terms, I'm just an assistant, not a professor. You're not a professor yet, but uh, by the time we're finished with you, you will be a double professor, sir. Cool. Because we insist upon it. <laughs> I, I, okay. I just made him a professor. Evo is now and a I professor. I did not protest. Yeah, and, and uh, Nicholas is a doctor. I mean, a medical doctor, because that's how I think of him. That's how I see him. <laughs> so that's true. the most important part, kind of a doctor, the one that has access to medicine. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right, or a psychiatrist. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. of which we have one on standby in the hallway, which is always always helpful because the subject today is going to is a real mind bender. Oh, not an Evo bender, but a mind bender. That was an unintended pun. Um, Putin's point of view. But before we get to that, um, because uh, our our guest professor, as opposed to our professor in the studio, uh, is an expert in sinology and the attitude of the Eastern mind, which is something we need to get our heads around in order to understand what the heck is going on and how we got here and where we're going from here with regard to uh, pacifying the uh, Russian uh, attack. Now, um, this week we've had some important things that are going on. And uh, I mean, I, I might throw out, do, do you think that uh, uh, with uh, the attack on the small towns throughout uh, Luhansk, that uh, perhaps our friend, Mr. Putin, and when I say friend, I mean enemy, uh, our, our friend, Mr. Putin, is, uh, is settling, saying less is more, and these little victories make him look better? Or is there a larger strategy that can work to actually uh, push the U Ukrainian army out of Luhansk and Donetsk? Because yeah. you know, they're right at the edge right now. If they push him out, do they take it forever? No. Sorry. I'm, 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 Jump in. <laughs> no, no, I think, yes. I think the Russians have finally learned that their strategy hitherto has not worked very well, so they've put all their forces under the command of this general whose name now escapes me, and they are quite clearly now concentrating all their forces in the Donbass region, particularly Luhansk, and the challenge for the Ukrainian... Did you say the Donbass region? No, Donbass region. Oh, sorry. Donbass region. Because yeah. um, I get confused uh, yes, by well, some you, of the writing about it. Yes, you well, yeah. there's a lot of nonsense everywhere yeah. you look these days. And, yeah. and, and say the... the uh, and, but it's clearly they, the Russians have learned that their, their massive firepower uh, can be is best concentrated in one area, and they've obviously chosen Luhansk. And this is, of course, the particular challenge this week, or yeah. at the moment, for the Ukrainian forces, which in uh, Severodonetsk are in the re danger now of probably being surrounded and cut off. 
um, which would be a tragedy because they have, I think, about 20,000 troops there. And so the challenge for Ukrainian high command this week, I suspect, is whether they withdraw from uh, retreat, essentially, withdraw from Severodonetsk to the higher ground to the west around Kramatorsk, which they can defend and with, uh, more easily than Severodonetsk, where if the Russians join up, there's only a 10-mile gap now between the two sides of the Russian forces. So your uh, point is my that, point is that actually, they could yes. get, be stronger by retreating yes, because they and could always come back. They, they could perhaps lose Luhansk, but they would not lose Donbass because they'd be then on higher ground to the west, which would be much easier they, for they them to defend. They would gain in strategy. It, yes, and they would therefore be able to defend by Donbass this more effectively. Move. But if they lose 20,000 soldiers, because you then end up with a modern-day Stalingrad, where you have this area ever more compressed. So I think that's the, probably the, the challenge. I'm not privy to Ukrainian high command, but I think that's the challenge. Do they sort of say, OK, we have to temporarily cede control of Luhansk right. in order to actually enable us to defend the, the greater Donbass area or to give us more strength? That's, that's how I read this week's, this week's developments. Eva? Well, I mean, uh, as I look at, at, at the map, that, 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 seems to be, uh, that seems to be the case because we have a salient that is uh, attacked on three sides and, uh, uh, you know, you have to weigh the, 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 the pros and cons of, of holding ground there. Uh, and in light, however, in light of that, uh, uh, there is one interesting development, namely there have been some... Uh, probing attacks by the Ukrainians in the south, which uh, right in the, in the, in the uh, general Kherson province, just uh, north, uh, north of Crimea. Uh, so perhaps the, 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 they're trying to draw the Russian troops down south from the north in order to, to, to loosen the, the, the pressure on, uh, uh, on the Severodonetsk and, and Lysychansk uh, uh, twin cities. So, who knows? Uh, but obviously, they are putting up a hell of a fight, and uh, uh, and the, st the Russian strategy, going back to your original question, is uh, you know uh, seems to be the only one that they have now. They, the, the sort of you know uh, Guderian vision of a blitzkrieg was completely uh, uh, obliterated, uh, and now they're going to the uh, to again something that you know when you look at. Countries like Russia, it's it's important to look into into their history and uh, wh wh where they came from. And and uh, uh, artillery had traditionally been the go-to way of conducting campaigns uh, by Russians from the 18th century or even prior to that on. Right? Mm -hmm. That was. That, you mean that, that new country, Russia? <laughs> that new country. That country which sprang. Uh, that, <laughs> Untimely. <laughs> that country from that, the womb. That's in the mid that Elizabethan started. Century. Well, that started more or less five hundred years ago. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Which claims this great, vast, long history going back to the Romans, according to, them. or perhaps even further. Perhaps they were the first civilization. Is my sarcasm? Who knows? Exactly. Who knows? Well, definitely the, 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 some, there is some sarcasm thing, out of you. But, but there is there is real there there, there is a real uh, uh, you know uh, uh, imagination of themselves, right? But I mean uh, that that does link them to yeah. to to Rome. They they do have this ideology of being a third Rome, right? And uh, there will never be a fourth one, right? So, yes, history is very important. Uh, if we want but they, to yeah, they behave, but yeah, they behave more like one of the five families of the, of the New York <laughs> Mafia. At any rate, uh, can, we, can we ask Olgerd to come in? Because, Olgerd, I want to ask you, following up from what we're just talking about, is there is this question in the news of war fatigue. Will the West still you get tired of supporting the, uh, the Ukrainians? Well, you are not? the West, tell me. What? You are the West. You tell me. Well, wh uh, what do you think? I have no idea. Uh, judging from what happened to Poland... Because the Kremlin's saying this. Just It's the latest tack. Uh, let's just look at that point of view that they're saying. See what we think about it. That's all. Well, uh, I can only say that the Russians are pretty sure that that will happen. They're actually playing toward that. So the West will get eventually tired. They will get scared of, of lack of oil and gas, natural gas, and 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 uh, and they'll finally give up and cave in and stop helping Ukraine and 
part of that is happening. Look, well, look what is Germany doing, what is Israel doing. It's getting tougher and tougher for Ukrainians. And on so, the front, so what do we do? Do we follow Kissinger's? Uh, you know, Kissinger had something to say recently about uh, that Ukraine must be prepared to give up territory. Uh, do we follow that advice? What's your, your view on that? We? And uh, anybody, we actually. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. have to talk about with, with the Ukrainians. I think Ukrainians are not ready to. Well, vote. they get. They don't get. They, they don't get a vote, do they? The a Ukrainians. According to all the professors, Marxheismers of the world, of the world, yeah, they don't get any vote there. They just have to, to succumb to whatever Russians and then we decide. Which is very sad for me because like not giving agency to the independent countries. That's always upsetting for me. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I think the Russian war fatigue is, is it's, uh, not settling in, and, and they're going to, to go into Suvorov way of fighting, which is destroying, destroying the entire enemy, not only the, the army, but also the civilians. And this is the traditional Russian way of fighting since, since the time they considered the Suvorov to be since the Since time of immemorial, according to Putin. Since before the uh, Hammurabi. Oh, well, built the hanging uh, gardens or whoever did wasn't it Hammurabi? Yeah, there is the, this whole the whole the whole yeah. part of of Russian historians who think that Etruscans were Ruski, so they were Russian, <laughs> right? The the Etruscans, yeah, Etruscans okay. from Rome. Yes, those those were no, it's pre pathetic, Romans. Really. They were Russian it's because pathetic. They were it is pathetic. They are pathetic. Only their literature is worth paying attention to. Only if you want to be morose and depressed, learn how to uh, kill old women for zero. Anyway, uh, I'm speaking of Dostoevsky. Yes, I have gathered that, yes. <laughs> Somebody may, may know. A guy called Raska, Raska. Yeah. Raskolnikov. There you rascal. go. There you go. Rascal. Hence the English uh, the word, word rascal. rascal. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Notice how close it is to Rasputin. Because okay. English and comes how close Russia Putin is to Rasputin. Exactly. What? <laughs> because English Sorry? comes English. from it. Yeah. Engli I didn't catch that. What? English comes from Russian, so you know every word in English, like rascal, rascal, rascal. Yeah. Yes, a Russian was telling me that recently, and I had to have him killed. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, and it was a slow one as well. We, it was death by a thousand rubber band shots, you know. It was very painful for all of us. My finger still hurts. A at any rate, so we'll have to see if the West will give up or, it will, or we will... Continue at this point. It seems like we've almost got into a, uh, a, a situation where we just got used to the war, and it's not even the most important thing. Uh, it's getting knocked off the front pages in, in country uh, in other countries, not here, because we're on the front line. But uh, well, the Ukrainians are on the front line. We're on the we're supporting the front line. Yes, and um, well, we're, uh, the front line as far as Kaliningrad and Belarus are concerned, but they're not hot. They're not active, thank goodness. Yet. 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 Operative word. Three little letters. So, um, it remains to be seen uh, whether... I, okay, let's, let's throw it over to this Monk debate and the theme that has been so strong lately. Maybe it's strong because of this lapse in our attention. And now people are starting to say, hey, wait a second. If there's a way out of this, if there's a way out of this, well, maybe we can just weasel our way around it, and maybe the Russians aren't so bad, and maybe authoritarianism isn't so bad. And after all, the Americans invaded Iraq, didn't they, and subverted so many countries around the world with their evil McDonald's, not to mention their uh, their uh, alphabet. Yes, well, of course, the people who the, but the people who advance the people who advance this line. Yeah. are only able to advance this line because of the freedoms given to them by the Americans, the British, who invented these sort of this idea of the impartial administration of power, which is the essence of representative democracy as understood in the Anglo-Saxon world. Thank you. They, it's almost as if I wrote that answer Yes, they, they do not have <laughs> exactly this freedom. To, they say, it's like all these people are pulling down statues. Why don't they go, actually, if they're concerned about slavery, why don't they go now to every Chinese embassy yeah. in the world, stand outside and demand that the slavery which goes on in China, which is producing goods which we use in some of our shops, why don't they demand an end to that? They don't demand an end to that because they can do it in Washington and everybody stands by and let them do it. They do it outside a Chinese embassy in China or anywhere else. Oh, good. And do you it, think that's it, a good and idea? It's a, and it's a one-way trip to a concentration camp. Is that a good idea? I mean, he's made a good point. It, 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 I, I thought the Chinese were perfect. 
Have they done anything wrong? I mean, it's, it's according no, to... I, I can tell you something. I, I worked in a Chinese embassy for a while as a translator in Warsaw, and I don't know exactly what they do when you are protesting outside. They take photos, and they throw all the letters in the garbage can, so they don't really care about any protests. But they, they record for, for the posteriority. Usually it's a press secretary or, or the second charge of the fair. And they, they take pictures and they record that, and eventually it will, when they will need it, they will, they will come, come along. They really don't care about what we think. They're playing their own game. That's a long game, and um, and we have to really be careful. I, I told you about the Kissinger and his bringing back China, from from the non being. Yes, we were talking about that before. Yeah, before yeah and. Uh, yeah, and and, yeah. Uh, and 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 he that's a very interesting thing because there is the non-existent Lenin quote. I don't know whether you've heard of it. It is non-existent. I checked it. It's not there, uh, but it's a very nice one that the capitalists will sell. Oh, I've, the I've only I only know his non-existent quotes actually. That's <laughs> so the, the capitalists that's the way I study will things will sell us the rope that we're going to hang them on. Right. Okay. And basically, that's what happened to China. Actually, the, the, all the investments and everything created a monster which is now looming over the Western world. And they are the next great threat, and I think much, much bigger, much even bigger than, than Russia eventually. Do you think the Russia, let's get into it then, the Russia Chinese partnership really works in the long term? No. And I don't think it does either, but why do you think it doesn't work? Well, for me, Russia is just uh, that they are now testing waters for China. And China is using them. I don't think they, they actually even realize it. But the, China is using them first to test the resolve of the West, the reaction of the West. And as I was always saying, if, if Russia ran over Kiev and no, but nothing would have happened within those three days of, that they have planned, the next would have been Taiwan and then probably the rest of Europe. Right away. Yeah. Uh, it certainly, certainly places like Georgia, where there's constant encroachment. I was talking to somebody from Georgia this week. Constant encroachment uh, by the Russians from the, the north, from the two provinces that they took in 2008 when I was there, uh, watching it happen. Um, and uh, uh, also Kaliningrad, which is always uh, a sort of secret weapon, uh, nestled in the, on the co Polish coast. It's the Polish coast where this place exists. People well, the, this, uh, this city may be Lithuanian, that. Polish, but it never should have been Russian. But... Of course not. Yeah. This was a complete, uh, I call it a faux pas, but it's probably not strong enough. At any rate, uh, <laughs> and then you have the Baltic states. I mean, these are places that are ready to go, not to mention Moldavia. Yeah, yeah and Moldavia, I just, just want to talk about Moldavia. Why don't Moldavia... you? Why don't you? It's uh, it's in, a, in a, an even worse situation. They have uh, all those all this Transnistria terrain, which is uh, mm, f factually independent. It's it's run by Russians and well, it's a strategic sliver, isn't it, yeah. between uh, between Moldavia and uh, Ukraine. and Ukraine? Uh, well, what is what is always funny for me is Russia is talking about surrounding them by NATO. What the hell are they doing with doing with Ukraine? They're actually surrounding Ukraine all the time. Well, it's correct. Well, it's, I, it's, and you, I, I want to bring up one of the. Uh, you brought up the professor. What's his name? Who's always apologizing? Mar Mar Marsheimer. No? Marsheimer. Marsheimer. Yeah. What is his story? What is wrong with him? Is a complete failure of logic, it seems to me, or understanding history, yes. even in its most basic forms. And what an apologist. He would have been at home uh, with Alger Hiss in the 1940s in the American government. It's ridiculous. Because the, 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 sorry, the freedom which we mentioned a few moments ago, this freedom has allowed people to have completely stupid thoughts with no consequences for them. But they, the result of their stupidity, the people of Ukraine are suffering, actually from the result of this luxurious in North American universities, particularly, it seems that stupidity has taken root. The, these people do not have to suffer the consequences of their actions or their thoughts. But far away in other countries, people are suffering as a result of this because it's this weakness, it's this inability, what it is, this inability yeah. or Putin assumed that the West had become so decadent we would not stand up for Ukraine or anybody else. 
um, and he thought he could attack with impunity. There'd be a few angry tweets from Ursula von der Leyen or other people. Tweet, something must be done. Bracket, Who's but Ursula not, von der Leyen? She's, for the, our she's, the, she's, the, she's, the, she's the head of the European Commission. Yeah, I, I thought she was the uh, president against of the Euro Winkle and Rocky. Yes, but I mean, there'd be tweets, something <laughs> must cartoon. be done, bracket, but not by us, because it might upset the person who's doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, the Kissinger approach is you've broken into the house and you've raped my wife, therefore I must allow you, in the interest of peace, to murder my children as well. That's a Kissinger approach. Yeah. Because, of course, it's not his wife and it's not his children who, are, for whom, who will suffer as a result of that. But he gave, he gave the Russians a major fillet this week. They'll say, look, Kissinger, this, this, uh, this august former U.S. Secretary of State, this man, this great yeah. world thinker, is saying that Russia has a what, point. Did you say great world stinker? No, well, he is, probably is. I actually said thinker, but uh, <laughs> oh, you've you drawn did. your own conclusion. I think he's a stinker. And now, of course, we have Macron and Schultz on the telephone to... To, uh, on the telephone to, um, to Putin do, again. Do you know about Macron? I, I have, I mean, we're running to China. It's the end of the first part. Uh, and the bell will go ding. But uh, if, I wish we had a gong. That would be good. And uh, like the gong show. And we, then we have somebody come out and dance. Uh, or maybe hula hoop. But we're a serious program, so we, we can have none of that. Thank you. to do the hula hoop. Um, so, oh, yeah, Ma Macron, if he had lost that election. He had signed a pledge to change his name to Micron. <laughs> he had lost that election to the lady from the right, yes. the far right there, Ms. Le Pen. Omicron. Mrs. Le Pen. Ms. <clears throat> Le Pen? Ms. Le Pen. Yeah. Le Pen. Well, look, yeah. look at how well Russians have prepared the political stage in the West. Either way, it's good for Russia. And could you explain that briefly as we run in the next look, two Macron minutes? Macron is not... Macron is not strong enough to deal with what is going on, I guess the same as with Scholz, but do we have alternative in their countries that may be chosen? Uh, look at the, the, the opposition to Macron. I don't trust Le Pen either. Yes, well, weak leadership or superficial, superficial nature of our leadership is a problem. I mean, we're getting the best leadership, believe it or... Well, it's hard to believe. I guess they believe it or not, that horrible cliché. I'll say it, believe it or not, uh, is billionaires from certain billionaires. They seem to be giving more leadership, which is crazy. It's exactly opposite as it, from what it was 120 years ago. I know. Uh, when we were trying to corral in the billionaires so we could have some semblance of a public forum that wasn't controlled entirely by money and hidden deals and secrecy. Well, this is the Achilles yeah. heel of the American political system. It's all about money now. Yeah. and perpetual raising money for elections, which, means, it's horrible. which yeah. leads to complete compromise of principle at every occasion. Having How worked in that? politics in How? the States, in Britain, and been close to politics here to some extent, at least knowing a lot of politicians, uh, it is a dirty business wherever you are. Go ahead. However, uh, you know, having complained, having complained so much about the West, OK, yes, France and Germany are obviously... Uh, uh, not understanding the gravity of the situation, well, quite simply, they, they, they don't. They don't have a... <clears throat> they look within Europe, and this is a global, uh, global crisis, and, uh, and uh, uh, thank God that the U.S. Uh, and its closest al allies in, uh, uh, in Britain uh, and also uh, in, in Asia, Japan, uh, also Australia, they do understand that... Uh, uh, this war in Ukraine is really uh, 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 exactly a sort of a test case for a much greater conflict that is looming. Ding! And that's the end of the and first half. And, <laughs> and that saves us. And that literally saves <laughs> us right point. now. Uh, it, it is China that is the, the most important uh, uh, factor in, in, in this game, even though right. it is Right. And when silent. we come back, we're going to speak more about China, and we're going to get Olga to hold forth a man who speaks Chinese. I always think of somebody who speaks Chinese as a lot smarter. Billion people speak Chinese. Come on. <laughs> Can't yeah, yeah. that difficult, right? That's right. That's for, I was talking to a Chinese guy, and I said, gosh, I think it's the hardest language. And he said, for me, it's the easiest. Okay, we'll see you after the break. <laughs> Tune. It should be expanded into a full song. An LP, maybe. And a, a whole L, a, a rock opera. That little, that little smidgen shows promise, I think. At any rate, 
uh, we are back, and we were talking about the Asian mind, Putin's point of view, how the Chinese fit in with that. And we have our expert, uh, Olgird, uh, is here, a sinologist from the University of Warsaw, isn't it? Yes. I don't know is. why I'm shouting. <laughs> Because I'm far here in Podlasia. You're way <laughs> over there, but I, you did have your hand cupped to your ear, so. Yeah. Before. Yes, so we were talking about uh, the Chinese point of view on the, on the events that are happening now with regard to Russia. And when we were just off the air, you had a good point to make. Could you, could you bring that out for all of us now? Uh, the one about testing all the time. I think they are testing. They're testing for the great conflict and for them. The, if you look into social media, they are still pressing one of the points, which is the most important for them, the one that Marsheimer also makes a lot, that it's all American fault. It's all because of Americans. Uh, you know, the, 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 everything is American fault, from, from the lack of food in Africa, and this is actually a strategic point because the world will bring some problems with food in everywhere, especially in Africa, and China wants to blame that on America as well. So they're preparing for the great global conflict with America. Well, I, th I, I see that. I think we should just blame it on the Chinese. I think we should just start. <laughs> we have better, uh, uh, more people you speak. Try, you guys try. More people cost. speak, more, in, more. Uh, we, more people speak English. Let's just blame it all on the Chinese. Start our own propaganda war. I'm a little bit tired of these guys pushing us around, okay? A little bit tired of it. Somebody needs to get Z in a corner and just, you know, poke him in the eyes. If he does this, do this. You know what I mean? It's that simple. Somebody needs to get this dictator in a corner and just browbeat him. You know what I mean? Or tickle him. I don't know. One of the two. Well, talking, talking about Putin. But humanize this guy. Thing that, that the West does not really get. You are not going to appease Putin because appeasement doesn't work with that kind of people. Exactly. You have to beat them, beat them on the battlefield. Other, otherwise, nothing will change. They will attack another country after another country after another country if we normalize that situation. Yes. The, uh, uh, the appeasement has never worked with this guy because we see that from the, in, the encroachments that we spoke about in the, in the first section in Moldavia with the Transnistria, in Georgia, which I've and, witnessed. Uh, and you, and you say, uh, it, yeah. it's like, but it's a good point. Appeasement doesn't work. And Come you, and and you remember yeah. when there was some incident with Turkey and Turkey shot down a Russian MiG. And guess what? Russia did not declare war on Turkey. And the Turks made it perfectly clear, clear to the Russians, hang on a minute, we're not putting up with this nonsense. I'll tell you what, the Turks just might have an equal army to the Russians based on their performance. Uh, they're no pushover at this point. No, they point actually either. have an army that has been fighting yeah. for the past, you know, yeah. 50 years uh, constantly, right, with the uh, exactly. with the Kurds. So so they, they have a battle-tested army unlike the... And it's sitting a huge on the border army. with Syria, and, and the, border the point with about the the Iraq. Turk, the yeah. point about the Turkish army is it is huge. It's very, very big. Yeah, I mean, so it's good that uh, they're m even uh, uh, somewhat, shall I say, on our side. I will say on our side. I wish that everybody could be on I would, our I, I side. I say this will you? sound terribly cynical, but I would much. Yeah. It would be we would all be much better off if anybody's going to be appeasing or, or, or sort of compromising with anybody. It would be much better if we did that with Turkey than with Russia. In yeah. fact, well, for our, for our, I'm talking about for our long-term future. <laughs> this goes back to the Crimea, doesn't it? Yeah. And, uh, the Crimean War is a good study for people right now. I read a lot about that w around the time of Maidan, uh, when they were, uh, there was the idea that the Russians would invade, which they did. Uh, I was reading a lot about the Crimea, and uh, it's fascinating. And Poland's relationship with the Crimea, well, I think we alluded to that before, where the, the Khanate of Crimea helped Poland to... To but just, to, just to, to sort of get back to the point we're discussing, yeah. I mean, as far as I, yeah. I, I, I In the can six, see, late 1600s. there's absolutely nothing. Um, we cannot. Uh, the Chinese are not are not long term or even short term friends of Russia. This is quite clear. Well, who, Putin, Putin, this Putin, is a good Putin, point. Putin Let's is ask being Orgy. used. I mean, there are two points to remember about China. In actual okay. fact, it's like one Please. is that a lot of the Chinese, a lot of Chinese weapons have come from Russia traditionally, and of course they're now being shown in the battlefield to be pretty useless. That's right. Two, I understand that the Chinese general staff have often uh, studied Russian tactics, which have also been seen to be useless. Right. Three, China has not actually fought a war since 1979, when there was this little sort of local war with Vietnam. That's right. So the, why, 
Yeah, so it, it's very important that the West has come together, as all God said earlier, to actually show, because had it not been for this, China would have been in Taiwan by now. Well, th this is, I, here's a good point that you're making, if I may add to it and see what Olga and Evo have to add to it, or both, uh, is that the Chinese, rather like the Russians, don't travel well when it comes to warfare. It's particularly not the Chinese. They haven't invaded anyone. They've never started wars anywhere else, I can remember, outside of their actual borderland. Um, they have a huge amount of troubles of their own, just like the Russians do internally, just with taking care of all the poor people that they're, uh, that they're uh, 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 what do you call them? They're robber, I was doing Jimmy Stewart now. They're robber class. Uh, at the top, they're robber barons to steal from. So they're very un innately unstable places. Now, what I don't understand is the fifth column within democracies that wants to say it's okay and criticize their own country using free speech, to use your... Um, well, you uh, know... And, uh, and act like, you know, I can... Um, I'm going to criticize the people who give me free speech and in and, and favor of the people who who subjugate the great mass of their population. I don't understand that. You have. Is there something wrong with me? Oh, yes. But it all began when Father refused to take me to the circus. <laughs> the, the, if, if it's any consolation, it's not a new phenomenon, right? So, so you, you have this uh, uh, naivete which... Uh, I, I need to be consoled. Which probably. tells, <laughs> which, which tells people... <laughs> you have this, this naivete that, that, you know, grass is always greener on the other side. Uh, and if you do not, uh, you know, if, if you take for granted the freedoms that you have, which are very unique to the West, you know, and, and they originate, we can even p pinpoint the time and place where they originate, you know, the, 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 the collapse of the, uh, of, uh, uh, the, the, the first uh, human organizations based on, uh, based on the, the first, first polities, the, the first uh, states, were, were universally based on one principle, a god king and, uh, and a population of literally slaves, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the difference that, that changed the world and changed that was the invention of the, uh, of the, um, uh, of the concept of human dignity which starts in Greece and then there is reaffirmed by Christianity. And these things together uh, uh, br brought us to an alternative to this, uh, to this uh, uh, autocratic uh, uh, way of, of running things, mm -hmm. you know, which, which is, uh, which is uh, unfortunately uh, uh, still... Uh, uh, the, the, and again, it's, it's, it's not about you know, race, phenotype, it's not about even IQ or anything. It's about the fundamental understanding of who human beings are and, the, and a very, very big difference, yeah. cultural difference, uh, civilizational difference, uh, uh, from, that comes from those, the, the choice, whether you, d you recognize that there is something such fun as, as, as human dignity or you don't. And if you don't, you end up with, uh, with bloody dictators and, and, uh, and you return to the original way of organizing polities, which is God kings. Uh, one, 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 you know, the bad thing about God kings is that, uh, well, you can't really rebel against them. One hope here is that, uh, well, when a God king is proven to the populace that he's not God, that he's not divine, then he's out. So that's... Montezuma. In a, in a nutshell, uh, in a nutshell, any, uh, uh, any story. And it's, 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 it, it repeats itself across Montezuma millennia. Montezuma ran a chain of gas stations in L.A. in the 1950s. Uh, that's just for the... The history buffs out there. No, this no, is a very town in northern China. New Mexico. Let's come back to China. Let's come back to China. That was a very good point for the the basic Thank philosophy, you. which makes me want to start start talking about freedom of speech. Well, I, I have so to ahead. disagree with Mr. Richardson about non encroachment of China. It's not true. It's just the the, the same way that you you went all patriarchal on China. We Chinese never attacked anybody. It's not true. No, I didn't say they never attacked anybody, but just not beyond their borders. Uh, more well, what you consider the borders? Well, the, the, what's it's the, just like with Russia. The it's area like around Russia China. The, the area border. around China. But of course, they attack yeah. Vietnam, and uh, they've been encroaching uh, onto Siberia. 
uh, which is actually Putin's biggest concern because that's where his and oil now is. They're, they're playing all the yeah. island go in yeah. the south of China Sea. And they're building islands, yes, yes. Yeah. But this is new uh, in terms of Chinese history. And whether they're, eff I said, effective. Uh, I think, and whether they're effective or not is another question. The Japanese, we but, know, but, but, are effective uh, in these about, ways. Look around uh, towards the west, the, the Silk Road, and what is now Chinese Turkestan, which was not Chinese for a very long 2,000 years. Mongolia. Yes, so, no, I, I agree. I concede that, and I meant I wasn't clear. Uh, so you're not really disagreeing with me. What you're doing is clarifying my point, yeah. which I should have done myself, and I didn't, so I'm glad you brought that up, because the Chinese are expanding beyond their borders in the ways that we've uh, mentioned and in the ways that anyone can, can look in up. In much smarter uh, ways than Russians, so they're using less force. That's right. And, yeah. and, and they're using more, more trade and wiser force, I guess, depends on the dynasty, of course, and I think they are now in the, at their mightiest in the present century. And they're going to try to expand and expand. And then, and what they, what is happening with Russia is the same that we, the way they were using North Korea for a long time. They are testing what will be the reaction of the West. And they are testing what will be the reaction of their own people by uh, severe lockdowns right now. Because lockdowns yeah. are also a way to, to prepare for the wartime operations. You think they're, use, they're using that as a simulacrum of a wartime situation, these lockdowns? But, I mean, it makes sense. Do you think that, do you have some reason beyond opinion, your own opinion or learned well, opinion, I, perhaps? Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have any access to, to, to secret, <laughs> to secrets of Chinese no, government. Perhaps but, uh, it's but, been but in some articles. It like, it? Yeah. From what it looks like, it's either the way that they're testing the way of, of massive control of the population, yeah. and they have been doing this for a long time already with the very heavy work on face recognition software that allows them to control the crowd in a really effective manner. Uh, the, the massive uh, control via cell phones. Most of the Chinese using internet, they're using them from the cell phones on which they had to install a certain uh, health controlling device that can be also used for anything else. This is an important point, uh, I, which I think backs your thesis, is this control of the minds and the information. But I, I know people who say well, China's just fine. They're mostly people who are doing business there, and they want to make some money there. But uh, oh, China's just fine. But I'll tell you, I had a Chinese. Uh, uh, I have a Chinese friend for many years now. Q Lei Lei is an artist, lives in London, and uh, you may have recognized the name. And uh, uh, he was one of the people on Democracy Wall with the paintings in '87. And uh, gosh, he doesn't think things are okay. And hasn't for a long time. No. Right. No, well, they're working. They're working towards the same the, the, this long-term goal, I think. And, uh, and and I do think that what is happening between Russia and us is just a test for Chinese. They'll see how it comes out. What what will what will happen? Probably they are deeply shocked by the very difficult way Russia is trying to win the war, because the easy one doesn't work. And they uh, and they're. Uh, and uh, I think they'll be supporting, and we may not know all of that. Who knows what kind of goods are going get, getting transported now via Kazakhstan? Do we know? Do we know what's happening in the Chinese-Russian border? We don't. And I, I, I bet there are some weapons changing hands there, too. Yes, and uh, I think Ivo was saying before, I don't know if you said it in the break or not, you were talking about uh, various brand name companies from China pulling out or or limiting the limiting uh, their presence in Russia. In Russia. Uh, you said Lenovo, maybe? Yeah, and, and Did I say I, that right? I Lenovo? Believe, is that, uh, uh, Huawei. Yeah, and no, Huawei, the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for example. Um, but that, we don't know whether that's just a show, as, as Olgerd's point is, or in fact it's uh, uh, describing a greater reality, or if they're just putting na uh, unnamed brands across and as Olga suggests, weapons and whatever. We don't know. It's a vast border, which they share, which is amorphous because the Chinese have been moving along that border, sending people just a little bit further to the West each year. And believe me, if you have 1.3 billion people or 1.4 or one, whatever it is, I mean, who knows exactly how many 
but it's like this huge amount, vast population, um, you can lose uh, 300 million or 400 million uh, easily in the desert and never miss them, you know, because you're still on a restriction. You just say, okay, the one child restriction is over, folks. Actually, apparently, Get to work. Uh, apparently during the last, uh, you know, uh, census taken in China, uh, and Professor can correct me, they, they actually now realize that they overcounted their population by 100 mil 120 million people. So oh, they've overcounted. So how many of that? What's the population based on that? What's the population of China? 103, 1.3. 1, 1. 1. 1. So I was close. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Um, do you take my point about in India is the same? You know, they can just send people out and never miss them, in, in terms of having a well, huge population. Well, China is quite interesting between Russia because the the scientific circles that I've been listening to uh, listen to a lot of Russian podcasts and and so on. They really do consider China kind of a, a kind of a friend, friendly state that's going to support them all the way through because they're also against America. This is kind of, we are in the same war. Chinese would not consider it uh, similar. I don't think so. And they, are, they do encroach a lot in the Siberia. If, if you listen to local Siberian people and, and Far East people complaining about Chinese, uh, tilling their lands, uh, deforestation is also blamed on the Chinese. And even the recent forest fires were blamed on the Chinese. And or perhaps the, the Ukrainian saboteurs, but uh, the Chinese are cutting a lot of, 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 of forests and they have deals with local, uh, with local administration. But the most interesting case is the Baikal case. Have you heard about it? No, please tell us. I don't know. Lake Baikal is, is apparently being... Uh, uh, the, 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 the water from, from Baikal is being bottled and sent to China. But and all it of it? <laughs> no, not all of it. Right? It will take some time. A lot of it. Yeah. At the same time, at the same time, it it is theoretically illegal by Russian law. But there is some deal between the Chinese and the local administration that actually makes it impossible to close down the the plant that is doing. Ah, so the plot is much thicker than just logic would lead one to believe, which is very interesting. I didn't know all that. Yeah, I but I've known for a long time that, that it was a, it was not even worth discussing that the Chinese could just start walking, you know. And what are you going to do? This massive border, you can't do anything. The and you Russians made that point about the borders. That's well, for them it is still their land. Uh, for the Chinese, it's still their land, is what you're yeah. saying, uh, from the old days, the very old days, the ancient days. For example, because China has been now Russia claims uh, uh, through Mr. Putin this really, really hideously ancient history, which is complete falsehood. But the Chinese have been around uh, as a society for five, six thousand years, isn't it? In this area, a long more, time, yeah, or even more. Yeah. And the civilization's ten thousand years old, more or less, We're going back to Samaria, the Fertile Crescent the Tigris and Euphrates area, the Garden of Eden. It's worth visiting sometime when there's not a war going on and going there. I've been on the boat uh, in this area uh, near, uh, in the south of Iraq, and it is very uh, compelling in, in its beauty and, and biblical in its beauty. Now, uh, the point is that with the war, going the way it is. I mean, the Chinese like to do what's good for business. The war is not good for business right now. Maybe they're selling a few things to the Russians, but they don't have a massive economy compared to the United States, with whom China is so much invested that it brings to mind the old phrase that if you owe somebody a bit of money, then you're in debt to them. But if you owe somebody a lot of men money, they're in debt to you. And I just see that the American and Chinese economies are so enmeshed that if America cut off buying things from China, it's immediate revolution, isn't it? Yes. In China. 
Well, this is, of course... And possibly at Kmart as well. Or, sorry, Walmart in the United States, because you won't be able to buy well, this 10-cent this, this, of course, is, the, is, is, an, is another aspect of... You, you talk about fifth columnists and, and, and intellectuals always excusing China and, and Russia and these other dictatorships, like George Bernard Shaw or whoever it was on the webs in the 1920s. I've seen... Going to Russia, I've seen the future, and it works. And, of course... That's, that's but Shaw. But this, of course, is at the other end of the spectrum. These are billionaires who have essentially be, betrayed the United States and other countries by moving all their manufacturing to China and sort of letting the other people, the average and worker... other places. The average China, worker yeah. in the United States will have to live off food stamps or whatever it is. And this is, this is part, of the, part of the problem. Yeah. We, yeah, we now see the Chinese are encroaching everywhere. The debate now about they wanting to set up some sort of base in the Solomon Islands, which is quite close to Australia, and they're doing a deal with the Solomon Islands, which will allow Chinese military to sort of have some sort of judicial capacity or some law-key capacity in the Solomon Islands of all places. This, this Chinese this, and this Belt and Road place, they're taking over ports all the way from China into the... Uh, and this goes to and, Ogier's yes, point. Sri Lanka, for example, yeah. they, they do these deals with African countries as well, where they lend them money to develop, they can't pay, so they have to then cede control of these ports and other things. It's pretty frightening stuff. And we're all sleepwalking into it because we're more interested in somebody's cat's lunch on TikTok or whatever TikTok is. Uh, it's incredible. And, and this is, this the is, deterioration the, this is a the deterioration of our... Uh, sad. Aided yeah. and abetted by our own stupid politicians. We used not to have... In America and the United Kingdom particularly, we used not to have stupid politicians. Unfortunately, since in the last 30, 40 years, we now have a generation of stupid politicians. I include the United Kingdom. They're uneducated. I mean, you look at yeah. Boris Johnson, yeah. to take one example. Well, he's educated. A man he who had no the excuse. best education. He was yeah. at Eton, he was at Oxford, yeah. and he, his behaviour is he's disgraceful. He's been a fine Absolutely writer. disgraceful, and he should go immediately. Yeah. And it's no good just nipping to Kiev and posing with Zelensky and saying, hey, you're a great person. It, okay. Feet in the of last clay. few feet minutes... Feet of clay is a phrase we're looking for, I think. Thank you for that. That is absolutely apt. In the last couple of minutes, I'd like to talk... Uh, last few minutes, I'd like to talk about Oliver Stone and who has interviewed... Uh, who has interviewed Putin several times and has been very prevalent on the Internet recently in various interviews, talking about how misunderstood they are. I even heard Mr. Stone, my goodness, a psychiatrist is needed, uh, talking, talking about how, uh, talking about how uh, Poland, uh, Russia's afraid of Poland because Poland has invaded Russia. You know? When? I, no. I mean, it was it, like, it, no, it he's, bought, he's mixed it. up. He's mixed up. He's bought too much of the Russian line. Invaded through Poland, but not by Poles. <laughs> well. No, no, we, we, we invaded Russia like, a long time successfully. ago. Successfully. A yes. long time ago. Yes. A long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Burned but, Moscow. Yeah, but that's a very and long time ago. That's the 500 years ago. Yeah. Or less 450. Than that. Yeah. Less than that. Isn't it early, uh, early 1600s? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was the yeah. 1600s. Yeah, okay. So, uh, but other than and that... With the French army, and with the French army. For the second time, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but that didn't work out too well. So the point is, uh, the Russians always just retreat, and then it's like, uh, oh, gosh, how far do I have to go? I think 5,000 miles is going to be a bit long. General winter, no mistake. In the winter. It's, ne it's never going to work, yeah. you know, you can't well, conquer the, the, Russia. But that's Oliver Stone Why would you looking from the Russian point of view. The Russian point of view is you look at a map of Europe, and you see, OK, where we were before 1989, and you see that the, you know, the NATO countries bordering or close bordering Russia were very few. And then you, in recent years, that's increased. So from that point of view, it looks very bad if you're looking from the Russian mentality. But if you get out a globe, if people can remember what globes are, and then you look at how much of Russian border is with NATO territory, and how much of Russian border is with China and other countries, or the sea to the north, or whatever it is, you realise it's still a very tiny percentage. So this Russian, we are surrounded, is a load of nonsense, of course. It's a load of nonsense. OK, uh, we've got to go. Of, uh, people who are even smart people who think the same way. You know what was the biggest uh, shock for me as a linguist? Noam Chomsky, the same thing. Yeah, Noam Chomsky, and I've been listening to him lately, and you just want to, you just, you just, you know, you just put your head in your hands and you go, what world are they living in? Yeah, and it's it's ridiculous to to castigate your own society, which is basically responsible for the comfortable lifestyle we have uh, today, 
at the expense of uh, far less productive I mean, society. sorry, it is slightly off point. I remember years ago in, in a taxi. And why, where do people yeah. want to so, live? But it, they want but, to live in the United this States is this, or in this Europe. This is this nonsensical... We have to finish. Say, yeah, but we have to got in a taxi... No, we have to finish. ...in London, and, and the cabbie said to me, my dad worked on the docks all his life, never had a penny to his name. He said to me, son, socialism is a luxury the working man cannot afford. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that I'm afraid, is, yeah. you know, the Chomskys of this world, the intellectuals, they Oliver Stone, a lot of money in... Ho they, can, they don't have to worry about it. They don't have to. So they've got theirs. But their yeah. children and their families are not subject to the world where they would have everybody else's child subject to. And that's all we have. All good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Ivo. This was an excellent uh, conversation. Let's do it again soon, and thank you for watching There's a Will.